Welcome to Reinventing Barbie Lesson 3. I'm Trisha Anders and I will be talking today about surface treatment. But before I get into that, I'm going to show you how I apply paper to one of the doll forms. Okay, so have your paste ready. It's not too wet and not too um, thick. It's juicy though, it has to get the paper good and wet. And you per first apply a layer to the form, like that. Being careful to position her in the way that you're gonna want her in the final analysis. And then start to lay your pieces of paper. Make sure you press out the air gaps. Sometimes when you come to boobage, it's a little harder to cover as you're going over a round form. Now, for me, my approach is I like to get the doll as close to her original self as possible. If you have a little area like this where it's, like I said, the, the round form is hard. Go over it again with your brush. Make sure it's so wet that it just begins to meld around the form. And use your finger to press out the air gaps. So like I was saying, I, um, I prefer to get the doll as close to her original form as possible. Um, while I'm laying her, uh, lay, layering her. Um, and then later, she's a blank canvas, and I can do whatever I want with her. I know that some artists are fast and loose with the paper, and that's perfectly okay too. This is just the way I do it. But if you look at um, artists like Julie Arkell, her, um, her use of the paper mache is rumply and crinkly, and I think probably the more that way, the better for what she's endeavoring to do. Um, so it really just depends on what you, you know, what you want to convey. Her pieces are whimsical and fun, and um, that way of working works well for them. Okay, and she's not completely covered, but you get the idea. And make sure it's all smoothed out. If you lay your paper on carefully, um, she'll be really quite smooth. As you can see on this, there's very little rumpling going on. And I often will do the papers in strips going in the same directions just so I can get an idea of how many layers I'm using and uh, that I'm covering it evenly. So if I were to go back into this one, I'd probably then layer it up with horizontal strips. And if you attempted to create a doll like this one that I went over last week, um, there is a big difference when you're using a fine sand and a regular craft floral sand. As you can see, this is much more bumpy than this. So, you know, whichever effect you like more, that's what you should use. Also, if you're gonna do like a whole black background, consider using some very fine glitter. And you get a lot of sparkly and dazzle and uh, you can paint right over it. I've done it uh, many times. So it's just a tip for today. Now I'm gonna show you how to uh, mix your epoxy sculpt. You get two uh, blobs about equal size, mush them together, make a snake. And twist, mush together. 
Make a snake and twist. What you want is for that the clay to be all one color. This looks like it's about ready. And then what I use the epoxy sculpt for is uh, I position the doll the way that I want her to stay positioned um, through the entire time that I'm paper macheing her. If I want her arms like this, then I'll put epoxy sculpt in this area and make sure it holds stiff. And if I want her hands like that, I'll put epoxy sculpt in that area and make sure they don't move. And I'll decide how I want the legs. There's always this weird gap. And I will fill that in so that the legs won't be shifting apart um, while I'm paper macheing her, which weakens the doll every time that the paper comes loose. Well, that's not what you want. So get it in there. You may find that it's helpful to use some of your safety solvent. This, it helps smooth out the, um, the clay. Those weird noises are my dogs, not me. <laughs> okay, so, you know, do it nice and carefully. And when it dries, it'll be hard as a rock like these. Hear that sound? Hard as a rock. About the epoxy sculpt, sometimes I use it to help create composition. So. Uh, what I wanted to do was conjoin these two right here, and I did, and it's hard as a rock, and it will, it's very stable. And now I can play around with the limbs without it flopping all over the place. I couldn't do that before. But, um, you know, there's so many different ways that one could arrange the Monster High Type dolls. They're really fun. And this piece, um, uh, I'll probably put... Uh, um, an eye screw here and an eye screw here and you know, something up here so that she can dangle and twirl around like maybe uh, acrobats in the air. And um, I'll make sure that I have stiffened all of the spots where I want her to stabilize once I've decided upon the, the composition, which is going to be fun because it's going to be unusual. If you happen to have a headless doll like this one, no worries. There'll be a little hole in her neck area. Stick in a toothpick or two. Uh, fill it in either with paper clay or uh, your epoxy sculpt. And you can start building up a head from there. You know, as big or as little as you want. It could be as simple as that to begin with. Let it dry, harden, and then repeat the process. All right, so once you have paper shaved your entire doll, you can start adding paper clay to her, um, smoothing it out and using really thin little pats of the clay. It does take a little bit of time, but it makes for a nice, strong, smooth surface in the end. And you can also use the paper clay to build up areas. Like if you look at this, Barbie, her waist has always looked really abnormally tiny to me, and I like to fill it in right here, make it more like a normal waist. And um, I often put a little tummy, and I will often shape her boobs a little different. Sometimes they poke out like missiles, I don't think they look right. And um, I always feel sorry for these dolls, and none of them have a butt, so I like to give them a butt. And I think they look better that way. At any rate, once it has dried, you sand down the, the paper clay and she is ready to be painted or um, treated with any number of methods. Um, it's like having a blank canvas. Anything you can do to the canvas or to your piece of paper, you can do to the doll. 
I hope you enjoyed this video in the next uh, lesson four. I will be um, talking about how to create a beautiful marbled surface. And I will be talking about porcelain clay. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. Leave any questions or comments that you would like. And join the Facebook group, Reinventing Barbie.